Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts Fast Door and Gear Sight on the web. And today we're going to uncrate the G Max GM11. Before we jump in and give you the full rundown on the G Max GM11, go ahead and subscribe. That helps keep bringing you the best gear reviews in the universe. And if at any point you decide you'd like to purchase a GM11 from speedaddicts.com, we would appreciate that. There's a link in the description below to get over to this helmet or any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure. So you're shopping for a dual sport helmet that doesn't break the bank. GM11 should be on your short list. After all, there really aren't that many dual sport helmets in this price range that are on the more affordable side. So 139 to 149 makes one of these yours. That's pretty fair given the inflationary pressures we're seeing out there. This is a lightweight polycarbonate shell. Uh, as advertised, it weighs three pounds, 14 ounces, I'd say. That's a little uh, on the heavy side probably, but again, for this price point, not too shabby. It is DOT rated. It fits true to size. It's an intermediate oval head shape, which fits most US heads pretty well. Go buy that G-Max sizing chart at speedaddicts.com. And remember, if you buy your next helmet from Speed Addicts, we have no cost returns. As long as you're in the original or in the 48 states, the lower 48 states, uh, you will get no cost returns as long as the helmet's in brand new original condition. Give us a shot, shot in your next helmet purchase. We'll treat you like family. Okay, let's look a little closer at the G Max GM11. So the first thing you're gonna notice, and the thing that makes it a dual sport helmet or an adventure helmet is the peak. You get this motocross style visor, uh, and it does connect in three areas. It's got kind of this flying bridge design, and they do that so that at highway speeds, the air will pass through there, and this helmet won't pull on your head like a standard motocross peak design may do. So you can run it with or without this inside of the box. They do have covers to cover up your shield pivots if you remove the peak and you want to have that more traditional full face configuration. Of course, that kind of defeats the purpose of buying the dual sport helmet in the beginning to kind of get that sun protection and that, that motocross look. But if you're doing longer highway rides, you may want to remove this. If you're going on a longer highway tour and you want to remove the top uh, peak there. So ventilation, you have chin bar ventilation here. It is a three position vent, so you can uh, choose halfway on or all the way open. Uh, up on the top, you're gonna get these crown vents up here, which are done with sliders. Same thing, they are three position, which is kind of cool. Most helmets are two position, so a little bit more tunability on the ventilation. And up on top is one of the strangest vent locations I've seen to date, and I've looked at a lot of helmets. This is actually an intake. It's really far back on the helmet behind the peak attachment here, and that thing opens up, whoops, this way. So you're gonna get extra air right here and that's gonna power that Venturi exhaust on the back and the exhaust ports on the back are switchable. Another unique thing you don't see on a lot of helmets. So colder weather, you can seal this helmet down pretty, pretty well. You still have some exhaust vents down low, but you can totally close off most of the top and front ventilation. So if you're in cooler weathers, uh, cooler weather part of the year, that is a nice touch. The visor, it's gonna be open on this one side here. This is 100% UV blocking, scratch resistant visor, and the detents are quite stiff. You get one, two, three, four positions on the visor there. And uh, there you have the visor. So again, left side to open, right hand on the throttle. Uh, we already told you about those plate covers on here if you wanna run it in the open or in the full face configuration. Let's show you the bottom. They do give you a chin curtain, albeit a very mesh one. So <clears throat> I don't know how much uh, of anything this will be blocking, but it is there. We also have a typical D-ring closure. Double D-ring, we'll open that up and show you the interior. It's kind of like a gray with some red accents. Uh, this is all removable washable. This is their Coolmax material. And this helmet is comm system ready. When it comes to mounting a comm system on it, you do have a nice flat panel right here. You can use a clamp style mount or an adhesive mount. The choice is yours. There's no obstructions, which is nice if you're gonna run a comm system. And it does have speaker pockets, not in the actual EPS of the helmet, but they actually stash them in this little taco right here on your cheek pad. So easy to put them in there and you'll notice they have some holes in this, uh, in this liner here so the sand will escape and get into your ear holes. Okay, <clears throat> let's open this up. We'll show you the other side. Not much these cheek pads. I don't think they're gonna break in a whole lot. This is a, a larger size. We're gonna show this to you, the helmet to you on my head. So that's probably why they picked the, uh, the fat head size here. Okay, <clears throat> let's remove the comfort liner. Again, everything's removable, washable. You got your channel and ported 
EPS below here. Let's get that chin strap out of the way so you can get a good shot of that. So all that porty and channeling is gonna allow the air that's rushing through the helmet to actually hit your scalp. So the GM11 does vent quite well. All right, that does it for the G-Max GM11. A good bang for the buck. You're shopping for something, an adventure helmet between $100 and $150. You got a three year warranty from G-Max. It's a great fitting helmet, runs true. You get no cost returns with Speed Addicts. Give it a shot. We appreciate y'all for watching. You still got questions, go over to speedx.com. We've got you on live chat, email support, phone support, or just drop your questions or comments in the box below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.